it's it's not it's not just children. Look here, I have in my pocket, right, uh, my my bus pass, right, which I've had for I don't know seven or eight years or something. During which time it's probably saved me ten thousand pounds or something like this. I don't actually need this, but I'm you know this this is the way we 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 have tended to do things, particularly in London. Welcome to the IA YouTube channel. My name is Reema Ibrahim and I'm Communications Officer here at the Institute of Economic Affairs. I am delighted to be joined by Professor Len Shackleton, who is our Editorial and Research Fellow here at the IEA and Professor of Economics at the University of Buckingham. Today we're going to be discussing free school meals. London Mayor Sadiq Khan has announced he's launching a £130 million scheme to give every primary school pupil free school meals for the next academic year. Charities and unions have welcomed the news but also said that more action is needed. The Mayor's Office has said the scheme will be implemented in September and run time, run time the length of the academic year but it's one-off funding for additional business rates income. A spokesperson said that the funding for the project was made possible because council tax and business rates, returns from the capital's local authorities were higher and originally, than originally forecasted in the Mayor's draft proposals. Sadiq Khan has said that the difference that they'll make for children who are at risk of going hungry and the families who are struggling to make ends meet is game changing. So Len, why are people calling for the expansion of these free school meals? Free school meals have, have been uh, around for a very long time. Uh, it's interesting they keep coming back into politics. Uh, I think the first um, emergence of them was back as far as far back as 1906, when um, permissive legislation allowed local authorities to to um, provide uh, free school meals. And I think it was very rudimentary in those days, you know, a bowl of porridge and, and a glass of milk or something. Um, but it's been with us ever since. Um, the the Attlee government in the in the 1940s. Um, wanted to give everybody free school meals, but it was a bit too expensive. And so um, we moved to a situation which we still have, where free school meals are provided to, to people, uh, to, to children whose families are disadvantaged in, you know, in, in financial terms. Um, yeah, we've we've seen we've seen the Mar Marcus Rashford episode, where, where which was extending free school meals to people who weren't uh who who were uh, their, their immigration status was 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 vague um we've also had we've also had Jamie Oliver telling us that you know they, they we must provide good quality food for children and so forth so it's it's it's, it's been a live issue for a long time and and Clearly, like a lot of things, we'd like to do more. You know, this is always the, the refrain which we get. And here is uh, Sadiq Khan with uh, uh, a windfall gain from, from, from business rates and council tax, and he wants to shove it in this direction. I think it's uh, probably the wrong thing to do, quite honestly. I think uh, to provide free school meals to everybody, it's it's a very common thing uh, that the people on the left want to do. Uh, let's give it to everybody because the stigma of having to apply for a means test of benefits. It's uh, and, and this is what's interesting, isn't it? It's yeah. the fact that it's a universal policy and it's, it's universal to every child, no matter how much their family earns. It's not means tested anymore. And I think what was interesting is that Sadiq Khan's reasoning behind this has been that it's supposed to help those vulnerable children. But it isn't just helping those vulnerable children, is it? it, it it's for everyone. It's a blanket approach. So if you go to a very, very good school in Chelsea, you're also covered by this free school meal policy. Why do you think that policymakers are going towards this blanket blanket approach rather than a more targeted approach? I don't know, but it, it is, it is uh, you know, you could do a lot more for people who are in genuine poverty. I mean, I think uh, I've seen a, a figure quoted for this thing that it's going to give a benefit of equivalent to £440 for, for all, you know, for each child in the scheme. Well, you know, there's only, only a third of, of, of kids get free school meals in London. Um, if, if 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 they got that, you could afford to to you know give them I don't know what what is it thirteen twenty uh, the equivalent of thirteen twenty pounds uh, if you focused it on them. But as I say, people won't do it, and um, it's it's not it's not just children. Look here, I have in my pocket right 
uh, my, my bus pass, right, which I've had for, I don't know, seven or eight years or something, during which time it's probably saved me £10,000 or something like this. I don't actually need this, but I'm, you know, this, this is the way we, we, we've tended to do things, particularly in London, where um, we've, we've, we've subsidised all sorts of things. Um, you know, it, it's, it's funny that Sadiq Khan is, is saying, oh, look, you know, here is this wonderful money we've got from here. But of course, it comes from somebody. Uh, it comes from, uh, fr fr from the community charge and it comes from business rates, both of which are choking London. Uh, why not, you know, have lower... Lower rates. business rates, right? I think yeah. it's interesting that the, the policy is then going to go um, universal to all of those children that potentially their families can afford uh, to, to pay for their own free school, uh, to pay for their own meals themselves anyway. Um, but the, the incredibly high, I mean, we've got the highest tax burden in 70 years. The fact that this tax burden is now being sort of used and that money is being used in a way, in a wasteful way, because those families can afford those meals. So why do you think that this 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 particular policy is so popular, especially amongst people like Marcus Rashford, those sort of public figures that are claiming that they're trying to end child hunger, but some of these children, the majority of these children that are going to be funded by the scheme are not going hungry? Yes, I, I, I mean, interestingly, both Marcus Rashford and Sadiq Khan um, benefited from free school mm -hmm. meals when they were children. And obviously they, 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 they see this as a, a good thing. I, I, I mean, I, I think uh, as an economist that the way to deal with, with poverty issues is not by giving people free stuff. Uh, you know, if there's a, a serious problem, then benefits should be raised, right? Um, and focused benefits, uh, you know, more targeted perhaps than they have been in the past. And you have to look at, you know, disincentives uh, with withdrawal rates and, uh, and things like this. But nevertheless, it makes much more sense to me to focus on individuals who are in poverty. But we, the way we think about poverty is, is become very strange. We talk about energy poverty poverty. Uh, we talk about fuel poverty, you know, all, all these different poverties. Even, you know, in Scotland, they have uh, tampon poverty, right? Um, the, the fact is that people who are poor um, are poor right across the board. But to say, oh, well, we'll give you a free thing here and a free thing there and another free thing over here. For a start, people's needs are very different, right? Um, uh, you know, uh, if, if, if you've got, uh, you know, if, if you're a child uh, who has perhaps uh, allergies and things like this and can't can't take advantage of free school meals because they've, you know, they've, uh, you know, they don't get the benefit from this. Um, people who are in, in small homes possibly don't need, uh, haven't got fuel poverty in the way that people in they big homes do. They don't use as much energy and, as other people. You know, uh, so... It, it, it's just a, a one-size-fits-all approach, yes. and, and that's what I think is, is wrong with this. It's not, the, it's not that we don't need to help people uh, w w w with problems, financial problems and so forth, but we need to target. We, we don't just throw money away because of a sentimental uh, attachment to a particular format. Absolutely. And then the, I guess the issue with this policy in particular is that it's very politically contentious. I mean, when it comes to children and, and feeding children in the first instance, um, it is it is pretty politically difficult. So once, once this scheme is implemented, I suspect that it will be quite difficult to then end it next year when there is less money in, in the bank. And I think what's interesting is that because this is universal, a lot of those children aren't in need of that. And you know, there is, not, there is no such thing as a free lunch. So it is being paid for by these taxpayers, by these businesses, and the yeah, businesses yeah. themselves are struggling. So really, where the, where these policies need to be targeting those that are the most vulnerable, where the economy, uh, where, where those businesses really do need the, um, those cuts in business rates, they're not actually being implemented at, at, at that place. So the, I think the politics of this policy is quite interesting. Yes, it is. It is very interesting. As you say, it's a one year thing. Now, uh, there will obviously be pressure to find some more money down the back of the sofa yes. next year to, to keep this thing going. Um, but you, if, if, you do, if you adopted a, a more targeted approach, uh, we could run uh, this, uh, we could run a scheme for, for three years maybe, where using the money 
in a more focused way than just sort of blowing it out on everybody exactly. who happens I mean, to be in school this week. I mean, £130 million pounds is, a, is a huge amount of money that could be used for those children that are actually mm -hmm. in, in need of it. Um, and I think that sort of chucking a load of taxpayer money um, at a policy that actually isn't targeting those that are the most vulnerable is quite interesting. I mean, you brought up the, the bus pass example, right? Where, and I think it's a similar situation is occurring with the energy price guarantee where we're throwing money in it and it's sort of a blanket approach to everyone. So essentially the taxpayer is subsidising Rishi Sunak's uh, energy bills as well as uh, the, the old pensioner that yes, can't afford it themselves. Yes, so I, what, why do we have this shift towards blanket approach policies? Well, if you remember with with the, the energy yes. price uh, guarantee uh, under Liz Truss, I mean, she says that, oh, we didn't have time to, to do it. Well, I'm not sure it needed that much time, actually. We have a benefit system, which is, you know, which it, it's, it's clear we could have upped, as we did during the, uh, the, the co uh, during the COVID lockdown, we could have increased universal credit, for example, mm -hmm. for on a temporary basis. We've got basis. the existing infrastructure We've got the there. infrastructure there. Um, but it just seemed, uh, I, I mean, maybe it's a, a political thing as well that, that you know, the, the, the feeling was that all voters were in trouble and therefore they needed help. And uh, of course, uh, that's true in one sense, but the, you, you know, but do you, you all could, voters need help from the, from, well, from the rest of taxpayers? Clearly, they, clearly they don't. Yes. But you could have adopted a kind of a slightly more modified approach where you, you gave a little bit to, to some people and, 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 and more, more to, to others, people who yeah. are in, in need. And I can't believe that with there are enormous civil service and this huge complex um, system of benefits and so forth that we couldn't have focused a bit more and but instead of course it was the that was the real mistake which blew the Liz Truss government exactly, you know because that, that was what cost is that so was much. the cost yes, it wasn't it was the, the cutting the 45p tax rate which was peanuts really um but it was it was that it was and the it, energy price guarantee uh, because it costed so much that's right as you say it's 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 it's, it's characteristic of the same frame of mind mm. as this uh business with the with the free school lunches for everybody Exactly. And we discussed this um, a bit earlier with the sort of the fact that this is only in London. And there are, of course, children that commute outside of London and into London. Um, but obviously, the politics of that means that if you're commuting from outside of London into London, you didn't vote for Sadiq Khan. So this money is, is being used in a way that you didn't, you didn't democratically vote for. But equally, those children that live in, 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 in homes inside of the barriers of London, in a London council, but are then travelling outwards. And we said that this is the case in, with, with a lot of grammar schools and in, in the sort of Kent and Essex and, of course, the Slough area, where a lot of people are moving and commuting from, it, from London outside of London, but they're not benefiting from this scheme. But they are sort of part of the, the pool of resources, their taxes are going towards it. So um, what do you, how do you think a more targeted approach would look? And also, why do you think there is this, this difference across the board? Well, the, the more targeted approach has to be working through universal credit. We've spent God knows how long uh, s sorting out universal. It's still, I, I can't believe that after uh, 12 years of Conservative government or whatever, we haven't yet managed to complete the rollout of universal credit. But that is probably where the focus should be, not on freebies. Fantastic. I think that's all we have time for today. Um, if you would like to support the IA's digital content, please do consider donating to the IA's Patreon, the details of which can be found in the show notes below. Please also subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you. Well, if you enjoyed that conversation, why not watch one of these other videos? And while you're here, remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll never miss out on a single IA broadcast.